Okay, so for today, um, we are going to talk about the first chapter of social psychology. We're going to cover some of the um, basic uh, um, ideas and concepts that we're going to cover throughout the semester. So I'm going to touch on some of these. So you might feel like, oh, I was really interested in that thing that we were just about to talk about, but um, we didn't go into detail. And that's by design. I'm just giving you kind of a taste of some of the things that we're going to be discussing throughout the course. Um, and we are uh, going to dive into those deeper as we get to those sections. So um, for today, we're just going to cover sort of what social psychology is, how it differs from other disciplines like sociology and anthropology. Um, we're going to talk about how we look at social psychology as a science, how we use um, a re the research method and scientific method to study um, uh, individuals and how we do that objectively. Um, and we're going to uh, basically get into uh, what social psychology is. And so that's the purpose for today. So what is uh, social psychology? So this is all about social influence. It's social psychology is all about how an individual is influenced by another person, by a group of people, by whatever. And this can be direct influence. This can be indirect influence. Um, and this is anything that we as a, as a people, as a person um, is going to uh, react to. Okay. So social influence is really anything. It's, it's uh, actions, it's behaviors, it's words, it's anything um, that uh, 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 other people are doing. Okay. And it could be even the, the perceived presence or the presence of a person and how that impacts another person's thoughts, feelings, behaviors, and attitude. And so <clears throat> we can look at, for example, uh, direct influence, okay? And then we can also look, look at indirect influence. So even, so what does it mean when I say the, the, the perceived presence? So um, if you're in a situation, for example, and I use a lot of like, imagine this, or have you experienced that? Because this is very relatable to everything. Um, every one of us can relate, or at least think about some of these experiences and how we would relate to it. If you think back to a, an instance, for example, where you feel like you are alone, you feel like you nobody's around you, that nobody's in the room, that nobody's watching you, that you are completely uh, isolated from other human beings. Okay, think about how you act in that situation when you are when you feel like you are in a situation where there's nobody observing you versus a situation where somebody's in the room versus a situation where you think somebody might be watching you from like maybe a camera, maybe you're in, when you walk into Walmart, for example, and you see that camera up there, makes you very aware that there are cameras around um, and that somebody's potentially watching you. <clears throat> think about how you behave when you know or think somebody's watching you versus when you are alone. It may be that you have certain behaviors that you do that you only do when you are not in the presence or perceived presence of someone else. So for example, let's say, you know, you have a wedgie, all right? And you want to pick that wedgie. Uh, let me ask you this and you can tell me in chat. Would you pick that wedgie if people are around? Now, some people would be like, yeah, okay. Or they'll do the wedgie walk, right? Where they do the thing where they, they, they do a, a long stride to get the wedgie out, okay? Would you pick that wedgie out if you were in the presence of people? So it could be anybody. It could be strangers, okay? Some people say yes, some people say no, okay? Wedgie walk, yep. Um, okay, now would you uh, pick the wedgie out if you were with somebody that you were comfortable with? Let's say a family member or a sibling or a loved one. Okay, yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, also no. Okay, so some people are like, absolutely not. Not digging up in there, not pulling it out. Okay, now let me ask you this. Would you pick the wedgie out if you were in a situation like you were in the bathroom alone, nobody there, nobody is even potentially there, would you pick the wedgie out? <clears throat> yeah, mm -hmm, for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Now, let me ask you this. What if you're in a situation where you're in a room by yourself? All right. There's no people. There's nobody in the room. All right. But you have a suspicion 
that like there's like a camera in the corner or something and you're just not you're not 100 percent sure would you pick the wedgie out okay some people saying yes some people saying no okay all right what if you're outside in a park and you don't think anybody's watching you but there are other people kind of off in the distance would you pick it out then okay some no's some yeses so even the perceived presence where nobody is physically there okay very discreetly i like that yes very discreetly um, even the perceived presence of somebody being around changes your answer. It changes what you would do. It changes your behavior. And I think that's really telling because depending on who's around you is going to impact the kinds of behaviors that you're going to engage in. And so that's directly that social influence. So even the thought of someone potentially being there, that is going to change the likelihood of you doing a certain behavior right? And so this is what social psychology is all about. It's looking at the context, looking at the situation, who's there with you or who's being affected by your presence. How are you be, being affected by their presence? And what kinds of behaviors do you engage in? Not only behaviors, but what are your thoughts and feelings in that moment? What are, what are, what is consuming your mind and how is that impacted by other people around you, or you think might be around you? And this is all what social psychology is. So this is looking at people's thoughts, feelings, behaviors, and how they inf are influenced by either really the presence of people or the perceived or imagined uh, presence of people. And one thing that we uh, that that social psychologists tend to do is really think about um, what happens in times in, in in situations of conflict. Okay, so what happens in the minds of individuals when influences come into conflict right so you are in a situation when you um would normally act one way but there's something happening over here that's drawing you to think another way okay so um you know and this is and we're going to talk about a lot of really big concepts here we're going to talk about a lot of very controversial topics we're going to talk about um, in some cases, things that, you know, are not what you talk about around the dinner table. So I'm going to come out the gate and I'm going to give you an example of a type of conflict that social psychologists are really interested. So this is an example of this kind of conflict. So if a person says that they are pro-life, right, and they say um, that they do not believe that people should get an abortion because they are pro-life and they, they believe in life, okay, but they are also for the death penalty, okay, if they are pro-life and if their definition of pro-life is being for life, then that's a direct conflict in beliefs, okay? It, it is a direct conflict of beliefs. It's the same idea as a person who is a cardiologist, okay, who operates on hearts and they are a medical doctor and that person smokes and drinks and does things that are not heart healthy. Okay, these things are in direct conflict with one another. So social psychologists are especially interested in when these thoughts, behaviors, um, uh, feelings are in conflict with one another. And how do you rectify that conflict? One conflict that 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 we can think about now conflicting um, thought processes, which is really interesting, is the my body, my choice a discussion right and so if a person says well um i believe that people uh that a woman should not get an abortion okay um and then that same person believes that they shouldn't get a vaccine because they believe my body my choice they will not apply that thought process to the abortion uh um uh, discussion um, because it's in direct conflict with their belief being pro-life. Does that make sense? So when we are having people who have multiple viewpoints and beliefs and thought processes, and they all conflict with one another and they don't logically follow the same path, social psychologists really jump on this and want to go, what is happening in that person's mind to be able to um, 
have these beliefs not affected by one another and sort of happen almost in a vacuum and not be impacted. And so these are some of the kinds of things that we're going to talk about. And these are the, some of the kinds of, of concepts and ideas that we're going to discuss and why it is that people um, are able to have conflicting thoughts and beliefs um, and how people justify that process. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about in this class a lot. And a lot of those conflicting um, beliefs and thoughts are very controversial topics. So I do wanna kind of warn you that we're going to be discussing uh, quite a bit of that in this class. So keep an open mind and remember that, um, you know, what we need to talk about is things rooted in empirical evidence and things root rooted in, um, in, in what we have learned through the research uh, uh, scientific method. Okay, so looking at these um, students and thinking about what these students share with one another and what they share across the board um, with uh, 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 in reference to uh, the fact that they're all in college, so they share a college identity, they're all together in, um, in, in, in this institution, they're, they might be a cohort. Um, so they might be all freshmen, for example. Um, if we look at the different ethnicities, we can see that there are diff different ethnicities represented here. So there, there may be some overlap with sharing some of these, um, sh sharing some of uh, these uh, backgrounds. We might see that uh, some of the family uh, backgrounds might be shared. Maybe we have some people who come from a blended family. Um, we can look at religion and culture and ethnicity, and we can look at all these different kinds of groups and see where do where's the separation and where's the overlap when it comes to the individual. And so I think it's really important for us to consider the fact that we as a as as, as a group, okay, any any group of people has shared characteristics and also um, have differences. And those are important to really think about in terms of um, learning about other people around you and learning about what pe makes people make decisions and do behaviors and have different thoughts. So the next thing that we're going to do is I want you to, I, I want to kind of expand on this a little bit. I want us to think a little bit further. What I want you to do is, <clears throat> and you can kind of do this you can do this on the side if you feel comfortable with with putting this in chat totally put this in chat but if you if you're if you would rather not okay that's okay because this can be kind of personal what i want you to do is 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 make three lists and i know i say 10 values on each list but let's um let's condense it down let's do about three or four values per list so there's three lists i want you to make i want you to make a list for yourself I want you to make a list for your parents or caregivers or guardians, whoever's like kind of like the, the parent figure in your in your life. And then I want you to make a list about your friends. So your closest friends in college. And I want you to think about what are your top three or four major values that govern your life. Okay. And so this could be things like there's some examples here, love, money, sex, religion. It could be family, loyalty, compassion, security. Um, could be uh, anything that you want to pick, okay, um, that you think sort of govern your life, okay, so that's going to be your list, and and as you change and grow, and, and your list will be different today than it is, than it was three years ago, than it will be five years from now, but in the today, in the in the right now, what are your top three or four, and you can put this in order of importance, or you can just kind of throw it out there, I want you to think about your top three or four things, values that govern your life right now. And then I want you to make the list for your parents. And then I want you to make the list for your closest friends. So about three or four per list. And um, I want you to rank them based on what you think they find the most important. Okay. And then um, what the best way to do this is if you can kind of do it on a scrap piece of paper or do it in your notes so that your lists are side by side. That's how this works the best. So I'm going to give you about five minutes to kind of work on this. Um, I'm not going to have you turn it in. This is an exercise that we're going to do in class. So if you want to kind of uh, uh, scratch it down on paper, um, once you feel like you've got a good kind of set of lists, if you want to go ahead and throw it in chat, if you're comfortable, it would be neat to see some people's 
um, versions of the list and how they differ and how they're the same across the three sort of different groups of people. So I'm going to go on mute real quick and I'm going to give you just a few minutes to kind of work on this. And then we're going to come back and talk about how this relates to what we're studying. So compared to your friends, compared to your parents, where do you think your values line in more um, closely? So is it more of your parents or is it more of your friends? So a lot of you are saying a mix between friends and parents. So at first, a bunch of you put friends. Um, some of uh, actually, I think it's a lot more friends and parents, actually, I'm going through the list. And so <clears throat> what's interesting is that as we move through our lives, okay, do you think that your lists will evolve a bit to be more like your parents as you get older? Or do you think that they'll stay close to, uh, to your friends and, and, you know, you and your friends can evolve together. Uh, so what do you think? Do you think that your, your lists would change over time to be more like your parents, or do you think that they would change more so to, to continue being like your friends list? Cause it looks like a lot of you are saying that your and your friends are much more similar in terms of value priorities than, um, than your, your family or your parents probably a mix. Yeah, I think so. You know, you're going to find that, you know, there are, there are friends who are at different kind of points in their development than you. So for example, if, if your friends are starting a family, but you're not quite there yet, that's going to change their list priority. And maybe, you know, you start a family in five years, or maybe, you know, you, you take a different route. Those things are going to change and, and wax and wane. Um, what I want you to do is take a minute to just look at your personal lists and look at them across the three. And I want you to note the similarities and the differences across the lists. And I want you to think about what those differences are and how does that impact you and your relationship with either your parents or your friends. So if many of you are saying that you're more similar to your friends lists, then that would mean that there are probably, excuse me, bigger differences between you and your parents' values. So how do you navigate those differences? How do you say, okay, well, your value is um, A and my value is B, how do you negotiate those differences between, for example, you and your parents? These are some, in, in some cases, some bigger differences that you have to navigate that are not necessarily going to create a, a, a very, you know, um, pleasant environment sometimes, right? So sometimes your values are different from your parents. Some of you say, okay, I'm trying to be, I try to be flexible. So like for some of you, you might be getting pressure to do something like start a family or to get a partner or, you know, and that might be a very, very, um, high priority value that your parents might share that might be on your list, but lower on your list. And so that can cause conflict. So if you're at, for example, Thanksgiving dinner and, you know, here we go again with the, when are you going to get married? You know, and it's like, you know, you're like, well, that's on my list of things that are, you know, that are important, but it's maybe ninth on my list and not for, and it's first on your list. And so we have to negotiate and navigate some of these differences. Same thing that we have, for example, with our friends. And so some of you might say, well, you know, maybe religion is important to you, but then, you know, maybe to, to your best friend, religion isn't on their list or religion is lower on their list. And again, you have to make compromises. You have to be flexible in, in terms of relationships. If you want to maintain that relationship, one thing that you have to, you know, also think about is the people who are closest to you. Um, a lot of times you do share the same values, whether that might be in different order, right. Might, might not necessarily be, uh, you know, uh, at, at the same number one, two, and three, but generally speaking, you're probably going to share the same general values as your partner and as your really closest friends, because that, that, that means that you aren't making compromises constantly that you can have, you know, a relationship without, um, you know, dealing with, um, you know, uh, arguments or, or, uh, debates all the time. 
So these are definitely things that we're going to be talking about later on, and we're going to be talking about relationships. So we're going to be talking about how we have particular values. We're going to be talking about sort of religion and, and uh, family and all those sorts of things. And we're going to revisit this idea, but it's important. I think early on to, to be thinking, okay, you know, that there are differences in values that you have from, you know, other people. And there's a lot of shared characteristics, but there's also a lot of differences there.